Here we go. Giving it to you straight with no filter. Danny B. Wins. What's going on, my friends? Andy, how are you, my friend? I am good. How are you? I'm lovely, bright as the sun, even though it's dark inside here. But I'm pumped up. It's a big day. We got mad flavor, Coco Diaz. <laughs> we got football on Thursday. <laughs> And, and we, we got, got Philly Godfather. And, and the Philly Godfather is on the line right now. He's joining us at the top of the hour. And we'll be hearing from Flavor Flav himself, Mad Flavor, Mad Love, Funny Man, Joey Diaz.net. About 15 minutes. Uh, Godfather, how are you? How's the connection out there in Philadelphia? Good, man. It's a beautiful day out here. It's a nice day to uh, go for a nice little bike ride or a nice jog. It's, uh, it's perfect. It's perfect. Dun. You motivate me. Every time I fucking talk to you, I get fucking motivated, man. <laughs> this guy has got the key to the fucking city. Football starts up on Thursday, Godfather. Let's get right to business. I mean, big matchup. Uh, number six, I believe, South Carolina uh, kicks things off Thursday night against North Carolina. The public or the money's on uh, Carolina. You want to talk a little bit about that game or... Would you like to start? I mean, the game went from, uh, it's, it's 11, you see 11, 11 and a half out there. Uh, the total dropped a lot. It's down to 56 in some places, 56 Correct. and a half. But I really, I really got no opinion on the game as of now. Um, you know, there's a lot of other games on the board Thursday night. You know, v Minnesota, Tulsa, Bowling Green. Absolutely. So uh, there's a lot of options out there if you want to put a wager down. Well, I brought up that game only because we have a top-ranked team in there. Uh, Spurrier's Gamecocks. Gamecocks. And I guess they expect big things from them. Uh, Spurrier's been there before with the Gators. Uh, is this a year? Maybe he, they're going off at twenty to one. Uh, can you throw out any type of? Uh, will, will they? Uh, do they have a chance to hit number one at any point of the season in your mind? I mean, it's a tough battle, man. I mean, he, he's a great coach, but does he really have the talent to get there? And um, I mean, if you're looking to, get, to bet the first game, he's definitely looking to make a statement. I'm just waiting on a phone call from a friend of mine who uh, is real close to the South Carolina team uh, to see what their mindset is uh, going into the first game of the season. Well, absolutely. It's only uh, Monday, so there's a, a lot of time, 72 hours plus between now and then, and a lot of shit does happen. And, uh, you know, it's been a, a pretty interesting preseason. You had a nice run. You know, are you guys going to even engage in any more NFL now that the college starts Thursday night, or you just whatever happens, happens? Well, yeah, we're looking for to bet an edge, man. We're looking to bet a, you know, a side. If we think there's an edge, it doesn't matter what sport it is. We'll we'll bet on two people spitting on the wall. If we think we're an edge, we're bet. <laughs> I'm sure you've done that before <laughs> as, as well. But anyway, you're listening to phillygodfather.com. Guys, if you've never heard of the man before, I'm sure you have. Uh, give his website a peek, phillygodfather.com. Invest the $10. It's the best website. Very informative. Puts out some good moves out there. And, uh... Yeah, here it is. We're moving real quick. Uh, Thursday night. It seems like you know baseball just started. Baseball's winding down. You guys haven't touched any baseball of late. I noticed, and it's been rough for a lot of guys. I'm going back and forth myself. So why did you guys back off of baseball? Any particular reason? Well, we're doing our homework. Football, college football. There's a lot of research that goes into this. And uh, if you don't have enough time, you know, for the one sport, you don't want to go in half-assed, and you really want to do stuff the right way. So we decided to chill out with the baseball because we were losing a little bit uh, mm -hmm. towards the end of that, uh, to, towards the end of the month. So we decided to go full-fledged into the football. Well, that's smart. You know, if it's not working, stop it and wait for the right opportunities. And we talk about we wanted to bring up something before Coco joins us because he's going to just run with it. It's going to be funny shit. Yeah, he's guy kills me. He was just in D.C. If you didn't know. Uh, mistakes, stats. We talk, we handicap is using these trumped up stats, all this bullshit. You want to make some points, uh, talk about that a little bit? I know that's an issue with you. Yeah, but before we talk about that, uh, Andy, check the volume on the, uh, on the, uh, on the oh, podcast. Okay. Is there volume everywhere? Yeah. I just got a text saying that uh, there's no vo no sound. Oh, really? Sure we're, we're, hearing, we're hearing you fine. Yeah, Let's... we're hearing you fine. We've got sound on uh, on the Ustream. Well, please keep us up to speed. Yeah. We're not, we're, 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 we're not, <laughs> Unless they're pranking me, who knows? You're coming, you're, I can tell you this. You're coming in clear. It's like you're in the next room, but you're not. And But it can happen. I'm not no technical uh, genius by no means, and Andy's just getting familiar with this navigation of this. Uh, yeah, if, uh, if they're watching on Ustream, there is a little bit of a delay, so they uh, might not have the sound because of a little bit of a delay. Yeah, we definitely don't want to miss out. Oh, you know, and again, thanks for uh, keeping us up to speed. But some guys just bust balls too. Thanks at the for same time. keeping it real. 
<laughs> so, uh, so anyway, uh, Bama, Powerhouse, three, uh, going off three to one this year. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff. I mean, BCS doesn't come out for several weeks. Man, the SEC is just so Brutal. powerful. Yeah. They got the biggest monsters on offensive line. They got the biggest, fastest defensive guys. I mean, the SEC runs the show. You know what I mean? It's tough against them. They, I know. I'm telling you, Bama's three to one, and uh, a, a guy I've been talking to for many years, he says they, they look better than they did last year on paper. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm, I, I'm always the first one to say I do baseball, and I do very well in baseball the last since the second half, though. It's been kind of hitting like 40-something percent, but overall I'm still in the mid-60s. Uh, but football, basketball, I rely on these guys. I track his, and, you know, uh, so tell us a little bit about your approach to this. Uh, most people look at teams first. You guys look at numbers. Is that how you start off with the numbers? Yeah, we're always looking at key numbers. We're looking at, we don't bet on teams, we bet on numbers, man. Okay. If you tell me Alabama's minus two and a half in a game, well, I'll lay two and a half. And then if you tell me Alabama, the game went to four, I might like the other team at four. So we're not really betting on teams. We're betting on numbers that we think will give us an edge and uh, make us some money. And again, that's uh, something that a lot of people don't look into. They look at matchups, stats, trends, and this shit, that shit. Listen, if it was that easy, everybody would be making a lot of money. This ain't easy, and you know what? You're going to have your hills and valleys, and I need some volume here, too. I hope we're not fucking this show up. <laughs> no, we're, we'll, we'll be we good. Every, can you, hello, Pinocchio! <laughs> hey, if anybody's not hearing it, uh, just send a, you can oh, send oh, a tweet way, or anything. It, take a look at this. Can you get a close-up of my uh, my shirt? Yeah, it, the catfish. I, I play baseball for the Mudcats, <laughs> and last week I was catfish, so I, I wore this shirt. In honor of the guy who catfished me. <laughs> I'm a fucking catfish. <laughs> Danny the dummy. <laughs> hey, Philly Godfather, I have a question for you. Yeah, bang away. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fucking, we'll we'll, we'll give this a shot. Um, so you were talking about co uh, coaches before. And are you are you looking at coaches just as focused as you would be looking on players? You know, like key players, like a really great quarterback or a running back. Uh, are you looking at a court, um, at a coach experience and uh, yeah, for their experience and um, their guidance as well and their track record? Is that as important in betting in a game? Was that question to me? Yeah, that was for you. <laughs> oh, absolutely. You got to put a value. Listen, you got to put a value on everybody on the field. I mean, the coach, he's huge and. I mean, you just got to look, look at uh, Peyton on the on the Saints last year. He wasn't there. Uh -huh. and in my opinion, the guy's worth at least three wins. He could be worth m maybe more. Uh, yeah, absolutely. There's got to be a value on the coach. And, you know, you, uh, that's the only way to really gauge if these teams are going to perform the right way. Who's behind the scenes? Who's making, you know, these guys move? Who's making these guys push? Who's who's making these guys work? And definitely, yeah, the coach is big, man. Yeah, Andy, the coach, kid, he's, the stir, he's the straw that stirs the drink, you know? Uh -huh. And he gets you. Um, he gets you up after you had a bad game. He picks you up when you're down. And certain coaches are better than others, and they recruit the best. You know, so yeah, the coaches definitely have an edge, but they ain't always the solution either. You need the tools, and without the tools, mm -hmm. the coach is only as good as what's in the toolbox. Did I say that right, there, Godfather? A good little <laughs> analogy there. Anyway, uh, almost. You almost got it. That's a good analogy, Dan. Yeah, no, I can't complain. Yeah, It'll no, work. I like it. I like it. I like. It. I'm just having a little fun, man. It's been, you know what, it's funny. I feel like the season's already started. I worked hard with this new project here, and we're just getting it off the ground. And It's all about fun, It's fun. Man. We're it's having great. a little fun with this. We get a chance to, to showcase some great handicappers throughout the year. The Philly Godfather will be with us throughout the year, phillygodfather.com. Uh, Coco Diaz, I'm trying to get, you know, I know you have a lot of guests lined up. Everybody's busy, so it, it's going to be an interesting year. Fridays, once we get on a regular schedule, we'll preview what's going on during the weekend, and then Monday we'll recap, we'll talk about the Monday night games and uh, what have you. So let's talk about some uh, misconceptions out there, handicappers with their uh, stats, trends, and uh, units, and triple ups, and diamonds, and all that neat fucking shit. <laughs> Uh, what, what do you want me to answer that question? Is that a question? Is I don't that know a what the fuck. What is that, what, that, <laughs> you just, whatever you want to just talk about, whatever's on your plate right now. We're just killing Well, some. listen, the biggest problem with these so called handicappers is they keep talking about stats and trends, but they're, they don't really dig deep enough to understand what they're really talking about. Yeah, a team has covered four in a row. Uh, on Sundays, uh, on my mother's birthday. I mean, what the hell is stuff like that? <laughs> you really, you really got to really dig and dig real deep. And they talk about averages and stats. And the problem with averages, of course, is, um, you know, they don't go deep into detail what's really going on. Because you always got a median. 
And if you're talking about an average, you can have, say, let me put it this way. You can have 10 guys in Bubba Fuck, Indiana. <laughs> and they're sitting at a bar and they're, and they're drinking. And you want to know what their average income is, right? So say each guy has their bowling jacket on. They all work at the warehouse. They all make 40 dimes a year. So what's the average income, you'd say, of people drinking at that bar? 40000 right? Yeah. Now, say, before taxes. talking, uh, what's that? Before taxes. Yeah, well, <laughs> 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 who knows what they're doing on the side and what they're flipping in the bar. But more than likely, you'd say, well, the average is 40000 Now, this is where the problem comes in. Say, Bill Gates walks in and sits on that 11th stool. Oh, shit. And he's got a fucking purple parrot on his shoulder, <laughs> right? Now, what happens to the average? It goes up about 90 freaking million with only one guy coming in. Uh, you know, there you go. <laughs> and the reason why I'm bringing up a parrot is because people listen better when you talk about wild, exotic animals. So <laughs> that's got nothing to do with the story. <laughs> but <laughs> the whole fucking... The, I'm going to have my bird is, on. I'll get Moses on next week. We're going to have him in a fucking background. He's an African guy. No, uh, no joke. He hates so him. now you're talking about averages, right? <laughs> so now the averages went from 40 grand a year to freaking 9 million with one guy jumping in. <laughs> And forget about if Warren Buffett comes in or George Clooney or someone with some big paper and they got two hot blondes next to them and they sit down in the 12th chair, that <laughs> average goes up even higher. But what's the real average? What's the median? Right. That's what you got to look for. Okay. So you got to look for, you got to get rid of the guys with the big money, get rid of the guys at the bottom, and go right in the middle and see what the average is. That's a real average, what the median is. And then, once you do that, that'll help you dictate when you see teams that are overperforming above the average, teams that are just playing their asses off, they're getting lucky. The quarterback's back there, he's throwing three, four interceptions a game, but he's also th throwing three or four picks that don't get caught by the defense. Right. So now he's, he's, he's performing above the average. So now what do you expect? You're going to expect a regression. Because he can't keep playing that way. He can't keep getting lucky where the defense ain't picking that ball off, off of him. You know what I mean? So stuff like that. So you really, really got to dig deep and find out what stats are predictive, what stats will lead you into a sequential probability where a, sequ a bunch of sequences happen that can, that can give you a predictive value on what's going to happen next? Because I'm not trying to sound smart, but numbers are infinite. But actions stop, whether it's an action that takes one second, 20 seconds, a minute, an hour, like a football game. So even though the probability of what was supposed to happen didn't happen in that action over a long period of time, because numbers are infinite, that action is going to happen that probability is going to come through and you're going to make more money in the long run than you are over one game. Uh, I don't know if I explained it the right no, way. But, but. Listen, I, listen, that's well said. You, you can do this for a living. I told you that a couple of shows ago. You should get on stage and especially if sports betting goes legal where everybody can do it and feel good about it again. You know, you teach these up-and-coming guys, throw some uh, seminars, charge them $20,000 an hour, rightfully <laughs> so. What the hell? If that big guy, Robin Gibbons, whatever the fuck his name is, can get that type of loot, why not you? That's crazy. But no, the guy is a book of knowledge. That's why I'm not going to dispute. I ain't got I got two kids and shit. There. I, don't, I don't have fucking... <laughs> well, listen, stat, listen, you need stats, okay? You got to have stats. But the irony is, sometimes the more data you got, the less clarity you got on what's going on in the game. So you really, really got to find what stats are pr in predictive in nature, what stats are real, like travel, like teams in certain situations, teams that have a sense of urgency, things on the line, things behind the scenes, like the coach might get fired mm -hmm. if, if they don't win. This. Like There's so many different variables that you can put into the statistical analysis that you're putting that will help you in a predictive manner and give you a small edge on what's going to happen next. Now, so Andy, you understand at the college level that definitely applies because kids are very up and down. They're emotional. Oh, totally, so, yeah. yeah. They can be the best team in basketball, college basketball. They have a bad day or something happens They get tied up with a girl, they breaks them, up with exactly, them, something like that. Exactly, you know, they, they make mistakes too at that I just level. think they're, at the college level there's probably so much more pressure because they are looking for that chance to get into the NFL and really just make, you know, break it big. I know that some college teams are getting, you know, I'm sure they're getting paid or they might be getting no, sponsorships. No, no. no the they're kid, not. The kids don't get a fucking penny. That's but why you, well, you know what's crazy? They did a survey in the NCAA and they said 1.5% of all college athletes know someone that took money to perform poorly. Oh, wow. Wow. So, that, I, so that stuff does go on and in the context of you telling us about college athletes, well, that's where the coach plays on either 
bigger role than in the NFL. So you got to put bigger values on certain college coaches that you would in the NFL. Yeah. So, now, it's, in case anybody missed that, you said uh, uh, how much of a percentage have taken money? To they not- said, listen, people lie. So it's going to be low. So it's probably higher than that. Yeah. But they said that 1.5% of college athletes know somebody that took cash to perform poorly. What that means is, well, they didn't completely fix the game, but they didn't perform as well as they could have. Uh-huh. Right. So maybe they're shaving points. Maybe they're not letting the other team win, but they're not covering either. You know what I mean? So, it, you know, it right. could be a, a, new, a bunch of things. And especially in college basketball, I mean, it's so easy. They're, oh, oh, shit. Flames, <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. Uncle Joey. Very bien cool. Oh, you scary little hebel. Oh, my God. I love having them. You know what? Bien cool. The people want it. They ask me, why the hell do you always say bien cool? Even when you see me out on the, on the road, it's bien cool. Why? Tell them. Very bien cool. <laughs> What's up, buddy? We got the Godfather online. How is Washington? Oh, sh- oh shit. <laughs> so what's up, man? I'm scared, man. I- I'm never going in that candy store with you again, brother. <laughs> How you doing, brother? Everything all right? I got some more candies for you. Oh, shit. <laughs> How you doing? How's mom doing? Everything good? I can't complain, man. I woke up today. I'm happy as hell. <laughs> okay, that's all that matters. What's going on, gentlemen? What's happening? Football season is motherfucking upon us. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And we want to hear from you, bro. You got the floor. How was Washington? Did you sniff the monkey or scratch the monkey that you said you were going to? Washington was uh, fucking amazing. I didn't know Washington was like that. Hmm. It's uh, it's very conservative, but they're fucking crazy. Like everybody else, we're living in a pressure cooker, you know? Uh-huh. Uh, society wants you to be politically correct, but you want to eat pussy with some finger some chick's ass. What are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> do you- so next thing you know, you're a bad person because, you know, and it's not. <laughs> it's not, you know, the big topic is now is your kids getting fucking bullied. That means the parents are getting bullied. That shit goes down, you know? Everybody's scared. We weren't scared growing up. No, we weren't. It was well, we a different weren't. society. We weren't scared. I was always scared. I'm scared today. But I'm not scared, you know? <laughs> hey, uh, no, honestly, you got out of there just in time the next day. What'd you leave, Saturday morning out of there? I know they had that anniversary, the March on Washington, something. No, something I, was there, I was there Sunday. I was there. Everybody was there. Blacks, Chinese playing the drums. Everybody was there. <laughs> Everybody's out there now. Puerto Ricans, Dominicans. Everybody's jumping did, up and down. But did you have more Republicans or Democrats in the audience? Yeah. You know, I didn't. Oh, this weekend, I think I had more Republicans. And they're a little, you know. Republicans are weird because they want to eat pussy, but they don't want to wear a bib. <laughs> <laughs> they, just, they don't want to put on a bib, and you got to eat that bib. You know, they just. It, it, I could always see a scared person when they come into the show, or. I never understood how a word could insult somebody. Oh. No, that I never understood sense. by me saying cock. You have to pull me over after the show and said your language insulted me. Right. You know. Those are people who are just uh, uncomfortable, and, that's all. Yeah. Uncomfortable you know, with themselves. <laughs> yeah, and it's weird how a word would make somebody uncomfortable in 2013. You know, you, you know, know, if you say stick around me, I don't feel bad at all. <laughs> the first time I get mad at the word stick, there's something wrong with me. Because I'm Cuban, I'm a stick. What do you want me to fucking do? <laughs> what the fuck do you want me to do? It's like, not my game, I'm not a snatch a fucking stick. But some people get, you know. You know, you know, if you call me fat, I don't get mad because it's true. You ain't lying. You know what I'm saying? But people, I, I never understood this. So this is the society we live in now. Thank God there's gambling. <laughs> hey, listen, real quick, real <laughs> we'll quick. We'll be more realist like you guys that tell it how it is, man. You know what? Up. And before we... I remember I was at my friend's house like three years ago, and he's black. And I was watching football with his father, right? And we were watching. And I'm like, this is great. You know, and he goes, look at this. He goes, his father goes, look at the coach. Tell the other coach, my niggas are better than your niggas. <laughs> you, you know, this is the time of the year when this goes down. This is it. It's fucking football season, Danny B. You're on point now. You're up 24 hours looking at computers on the phone with the Philly Godfather, you know. This is good stuff, you know. And you talked about people. You every. I've been to your bunch of your shows. I'll see you in New York in a couple of weeks. But you point them out. You say, you say Danny B., this one right here, they're going to walk out. These people, they're going to like me. These people are going to just puke and leave. So you're right. You I know, can just know. You yeah, do. you got deck shoes on. Yeah. You know those people that wear those fucking half a fag deck shoes? You, you're a goner. <laughs> you're a goner. You got no balls. If a chick, yeah, if a chick comes to my show with a skirt on, with uh, sandals, she's going. <laughs> if a chick comes with heels, she don't mind taking a tumble load to the heels. <laughs> That's a savage. But if a chick with sandals, she's conservative. She really don't want to wear the heels. 
<laughs> you know, that means she don't want to get dick and she's scared of dick. Well, you know, if she saw a big blank dick, she'd pass out anyway. So. <laughs> well, listen, how about cab drivers? They seem to be sensitive. You had a, a touchy cab driver in Philadelphia. Oh, that's, that's fucking Arab cop suck, though. How about <laughs> that, that dick? Godfather, you guys, that was... cousin's blowing people up in Syria somewhere, <laughs> and this guy's offended by the language. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> You're lucky. You know, he was, that guy was so lucky that we weren't on a way to a fucking comedy show and I didn't, I didn't want to have blood on my shirt. <laughs> we would have stabbed that motherfucker 30 years ago. Think about it. Really, Danny? <laughs> we would have put him in like a if truck. He was, if he picked us up by your old house on 76th Street and he was taking us to the city and he said that to us on Boulevard East by 30th Street, right, right. we'd all say, okay, and we look at each other like, you know what time it is. <laughs> and we'd, we'd tell that motherfucker, hold on, forget 48th Street. Take us to 113. I got to go to my aunt's house and we give him 50 bucks because it don't matter when I take it back from them. <laughs> and right down, right down 113, right on 5th there, we're all right where the, out the park is. Yeah. You fucking pull them out of there and start kicking them and dragging them and stepping on them. <laughs> and tell them, fuck you, this is America, cocksucker. <laughs> Oh, been my God, you know what? It's so fun. And, and we had big balls. We did some crazy shit. You talk about it on stage, on your podcast, but... We look back, it's 30 plus years, Coco, and we did some crazy, the fag bagging. Remember the fag bagging on Boulevard? Oh, my He's, God. That was funny. That was a, you know, you think about that now. Those weren't fags. Those were perverted old guys they that would come back, from the city. They fought back some of and them. Try to, yeah. <laughs> and try to suck young kids' dicks. And we got a hold of this. And we went over there and started tearing them up, and it was classic. <laughs> the best was Bruce, though, when he took the guy's boots one night. The guy, the guy had cowboy boots, and Russo told him, give me your money. Because I don't have no money. Give me those fucking boots. The guy walked home barefoot. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Oh, my God. Classic. And you know what the funny part, Coco, about that area, too? The Hudson County Park had the most U UFO sightings in America. You know, it's, Still to today. To this Still day. to today. And I always thought it was because the people in the roundhouse, the round building, were all fucking paranoid, and it was the human grinder. It was like this, you know, a grinder where you put the coke in it? Yeah, yeah. It was round. <laughs> I'm thinking they got better drugs out there. No, well, I'm too <laughs> golf oh Listen, I, I if you go online right now, if you go online right now, YouTube has a video about when the marshes landed in 70-something <laughs> in Hudson County Park. Yep, that's my... And the guy outside saying where the fucking Martians landed, where they were digging... I mean, it was, just wasn't one person who said this. It was that whole area that saw the lights. It's uh -huh. online. Gary, the documents are online. As crazy as my brother is, you know, he's back in jail, but he says that's when he was first uh, abducted by them. Because he, Gary, yeah, to this day... Yeah, Hudson County Park. Yep, Gary, to this day, at six years old, or whatever he would have been at that time, eight years old, was uh, uh, abducted from the first time, and they put a tracking device, and they found him in prison years later. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and it's classified shit, he said, and, well, I'd never get the truth out of him anyway, but, no, that was some fun times. Uh, Godfather, your area similar? You had some whacked-out people growing up, some crazy shit, all-nighters, all that stuff? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, when we were younger, we weren't just moving lines. We were snorting lines all freaking night, popping champagne bottles, getting in the fights. You know, back there was a, there was a big mob influence in South Philly, so you had to really be careful. You know, certain places you want to, some guys didn't like each other, South Philly, North Philly, Center City, and it, it was crazy back then. <laughs> you know, I remember a story where uh, I kept robbing this this, uh, this uh, janitor from the high school. We come up every Friday night to Joe and Mary's, and I would rob him. I would take his Valiant. What was his name? He didn't. He wasn't he an epileptic or something like that? Too? He was an he was an epileptic. Nice guy. He'd come in and he'd put his jacket on the chair, and I'd go in his pocket and take the pill thing out and take all the Valiant and give him away. Well, after like four weeks, the guy finds out that you know I'm stealing his Valiant, so he just keeps the epileptic pills in there. And I steal them one night. We're all coked out. We don't know no better, so I just start giving out the epileptic pills because they look like baby quaaludes. <laughs> and let me tell you something, people were sleeping for four or five fucking days. <laughs> Those epileptic pills, they'll fuck you up. So. so about a month later, we see the janitor, and we go to rob him again. He ain't got no violence. I'm at the end of the night, Larry McNeil, me, and somebody else beat that poor janitor up. I bitch slapped him and dragged him. I feel bad to this day. I go to church and put an extra dollar in the bucket because I felt so bad. I can't picture his name, but he had bad skin, and that's all I can remember. Yeah. He had the bad skin, and fucking <laughs> Lila used to tell us don't pick on him or something like that all the time because we were big all, guy, yeah, big guy, yeah. big guy, strong guy. He was a fucking mule that night. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, we can talk and go on. But listen, you're just where, where are you headed next after this? You doing anything this weekend? I know you're in New York the 13th. 
Yeah, you know, I'm going to I'm going to the UFC with Rogan. Uh, I'm going to uh, oh, Milwaukee to see Anthony Pettis against uh, the black kid Bernard Henderson. Bernard Henderson. Good. Oh. It's going to be a good fucking fight. Usually, I don't stay. Yeah, I'm staying this week for them. So you you go on tour? So, you, you're on tour with him often, Coco, or what? Or just here and there? You know what? If it's a good UFC fight and he's got a theater or something, and I'm home, I'll, I'll fucking go. Yeah, it's fun. That's... Yeah. I went to Boston with him last week. It was great. Yeah. It was fucking great. Now, one of your one of your guys reached out to me, Giancarlo, somebody. Demount, I can't pronounce his name. He's probably listening to the show. Are you familiar with him? Yeah, yeah, I know a lot of those guys. If it's Giancarlo, there's a couple. I have Giancarlo. And I got another guy that's Italian with a crazy name like that. I love those crazy names, <laughs> Giancarlo Giannini or something like that. I yeah, love those. Fucking yeah, he contacted me. He does a podcast. He won the pizza. Uh, the Pizza Hut thing. He did the Pizza Hut video or something like that. Didn't you okay. mention? Okay. Well, anyway, he contacted me. I'm going to be doing his podcast. We were supposed to do it the other day, but he was in a shit part of town, and he had to hold off on that. But So what else is going on? How's the baby? How's the wife? How's how's life there, baby? You know, guy? man, listen to this. I get home yesterday. You're not gonna, God works in a fucked up way, guys. You know, and uh, the beautiful thing about being 50, as you guys know, is that you see the whole field now. You see the defensive backs. You see the linebackers. You see the coaches. Your arm is healthy, your legs are healthy, only one problem. You only got three minutes left in the fucking game. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Unless you hit overtime, then you get a, a, a buy, you know. Right, right. So you see all these things, and it's weird. I'm sitting there with my wife yesterday, I'm playing with the baby, and SpongeBob SquarePants is on, it's starting. That's dirty stuff. And it's an episode with Ernest Borgnine and Tim Conway. I saw it. Okay, and I look at my wife, and I go, honey, I would love to fucking be on SpongeBob. <laughs> right. <laughs> I fucking wake up this morning, right? I had the baby from 8.30, and my wife goes to work, and I watched uh, TV with her, and then she slept. And then about 9.35, I put her in the fan. I'm walking with her right now as we speak. Cool. <laughs> I go to my phone, I get an email, and I look at it, and I open it, it's my agent. And it says, audition size and info. Tomorrow I'm going in to fucking SpongeBob 2. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I have a voiceover as one of the guys in the restaurant. Oh, oh my bro, God. God oh. works in mysterious ways. That's and he gave me two different auditions, Middleton. This guy, Joe Middleton, called me, a Philly guy. He gave me two auditions, and I read what it said. He goes, tell Joey he could either read for both of them or for one of them. I want him to read for both of them because I want him to get this. Oh so my. hopefully I'll get a couple of days on SpongeBob, you know. <laughs> and that's why when you're watching it with your daughter, you can say, that's Daddy, the, the short, order, yeah. the short yeah. order cook with the fucking sweat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, that's, I'm going to be at the Crab Shack, so the that's crab. good. I like the Crab Shack. <laughs> fucking Mr. Crab. I like the that fucking, guy. <laughs> fucking rob the motherfucker's money. He hates fucking when people touch his money, Mr. Krabs. <laughs> it's like my son. I call him Mr. Krabs. My older boy, he's as cheap as they get. I don't know where, because I got, you know me, Coco, I'll give you my last fucking dollar. This oh, please. And then some. You'll borrow to give out. <laughs> <laughs> and this fucking kid, he won't part with anything, bro. I have to really, it's like sad, but uh, I call him Mr. Krabs. Yeah, they start off with SpongeBob, then they work their way up, but there's some perversion in that. You know what the fucked up ironic part about SpongeBob? A lot of the cast members of, like, names of my family. Gary, the snail, Bobby, my brother, Patrick, my cousin that Bobby molested. It was fucking crazy. <laughs> So I, every time I see that, I say, I can't watch this. It reminds me of my past. Too many fucking uh, common uh, names there. So what else, guys? It's, it's a, Go ahead. No, it's a great show. Uh, you know, there ain't much going on. I mean, it's quiet. You know, I got stand-up, and uh, today I got to go to the doctor, and I got to oh. drop some packages off, and I got to sign my daughter off for swimming class. Already? Besides she's, that, you know. Oh, it's talking about Yes, you see this? She did the last semester. It's baby class. You go in there with them, and they kick. And they sing songs and you throw animals. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm doing the doctor thing, too. I get the uh, the ultrasound on the liver. And then next week, they stick the shit down my mouth, uh, the uh, epicolotic or whatever the fuck that thing, where the upper GI. And then uh, then they get dirty in October and they stick that fucking camera up my ass. <laughs> I'm, get, I'm getting it all over and done with, man. I got the kids. You know, if it wasn't for them, I'd be fucking crazy. Believe me, still. I'd be still standing around cool, oh, but... <laughs> They calm me down. They call me beyond cool, Coco, because you'd see me on Friday and come Monday morning, I'd still be awake. You know, it was fucked up times. <laughs> hey, Uncle Coco, let me ask you a question, man. I know at our age we need some performance enhancing drugs. What do you think about all these athletes and what they're taking with the HTH and the steroids? Do you think it's good for the sports or not? You know, man, I have pro and con. You know, I'm pro and con. You know, I don't see how taking steroids makes you hit 68 home runs. 
because you still yeah, got to hit a fucking ball. You know, I don't get that yeah. part of it. Well, they don't talk about all the scrubs in the minor leagues who are taking the shit and can't do nothing. So, I mean, it's a double-edged sword, you know what I mean? It really, you know, I know baseball was struggling. They brought baseball back, you know. But I grew up there in the Cincinnati Reds when they played with Hart and who the fuck knew who was on steroids and who knew who was it, you know. So I don't really know much about that world. I know what's going on with Alex Rodriguez and they want to get rid of him and this and this. I just don't even know where to stand, you know. I mean... We all know that you could worry about steroids and everything, but it's got nothing to do with the fucking line on Sunday. If they're going to cover, they're going to fucking cover. If they ain't going to cover, they ain't going to cover. That could be a robber. ain't going to fucking help that or will help that. Nah. I don't really know. I don't know. You know, I don't know what. I know it's craziness. I know they're going after them heavy, you know. Yeah. Hey, but, I'll... you know, in my world, between you and me, I think smoking pot is, a, cause, is an enhancer in a way. You know, when you smoke pot, you feel fucking grandiose. I love working out, but I like working out when I smoke pot. <laughs> <Get your mind. laughs> hey, Uncle Joey. Uh, you, sm- you, sm- you smoke a half a fucking joint. You're lifting weights. It's a beautiful thing. You don't even think about the weights. You're thinking about the music on the iPod. How about uh, how about when you do jujitsu? Do you smoke when you do jujitsu? You know, I don't because I want to breathe, and that shit fucking you need to breathe. I need all the help I can get. <laughs> I, uh, so, the only this is a- this is Andy. I'm the 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 help on the podcast. He's, the Lee. He's my Lee. I'm, yeah, I'm the Lee What's on the up, podcast. Andy? What's going I'm on? I'm happy you're doing this, brother. Thank you for helping out, Danny. You're oh hell man. yeah, of course. Um, I heard I met Danny through through your podcast through having him on, and uh, it's a beautiful thing. Everything came together. But um, the only sport I know is jujitsu, and I'm a Tenth Planet guy out of Allentown. Uh, the 10th Planet Allentown guys wanted me to, to tell you what's up and uh, that they're huge fans of the podcast. But uh, I always hear you talk about jiu-jitsu on, on your podcast, and I know you know a lot of us guys, we like to, we like to smoke and roll, and I, I've always wanted to ask you if, if that was something that you were into. So you're not into that. No, you know what happened when I was first, listen, I eat Chibo Chews all fucking day. You know, <laughs> oh, you know what I mean? no. I go to a weed store and the guy gives me a drink, I drink it. Yeah. I don't plan that. But when you go in there, I was getting panic attacks. Oh, okay. When I roll on the bottom, I get panic attacks. I have to get up and take my gear off and my fucking thing go take a pee. <laughs> so uh, I went and got hypnotized to stop having the panic attacks. And you know what? You get into jujitsu, you want to roll. That's oh, yeah. why you're there. You oh. want to roll. So if you can't breathe, you can't roll. Now, do you roll, you roll gi exclusively or do you roll no gi at, sometimes? No, I just go gi. I've never even rolled no gi. I know nothing about the no gi. Oh, wow. I've never rolled his fucking weed, for Christ's sakes. Rolling <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. no. I don't know, know anything about no gi at all because I really want to learn the gi. Yeah, okay. Just start off. I want to do it the right way. You know, I want to do it. You know, I talk to a lot of different people and they're like, Eddie's great, but Eddie's not good to walk in the first day. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's di- not it's good different, for you to yeah. walk in the first day into Eddie. You should learn 90 days somewhere else. Get a couple basics, and then Eddie will enhance that shit. Yeah. Um, now I know that you're coming to New York City, and uh, Eddie Bravo is a huge fan of Marcelo Garcia. Do you have any plans of maybe visiting the school and like getting a roll in, or what? You know what, man? Uh, that's a great idea. I think I might on Friday morning. That's Rip. a great idea. Hey, you know what? I'm not. You know, I'm not good enough for any of those schools. I'm fucking horrible. But <laughs> I was also horrible. The first time I got on stage. Ah, no, you weren't. You were always fucked up. Stop it. You've been funny since no, you were. No, 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 no. Trust me. I was there, man. Being funny and you, being you, 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 Anybody can be funny. You're a funny guy, Danny. But, Let me put you up on stage with 200 eyeballs looking at you. No, yeah. but I listen. <laughs> I, I know. I, hell, I listen. I, I got to give you credit, but you fucking blow them away. The first show you did at Tedesco's. I remember that 1990s something, early 90s. You fucking were funny out the door. You did your Jimmy Lebrano thing and... That's when I said, this motherfucker, and I didn't see it for a few years after that, I said, that he found his fucking notch, man. He found his niche, rather. And and real quick, since we're talking sports and football is here Thursday, and we got one of the foremost guys out there, the phillygodfather.com, you were a handicapper for a, a, a couple of years, you know? You were, yeah, for we, three years, man. We would talk about how, how bad handicappers are. You know, I worked for some shady guys in the past, but some of the shit that they pull out, you know, that's what we're talking about. This time of year, you got people looking for good services. You know, there's a lot of good out there, but most of these guys can't pick their wife out of a photo lineup. Coco? No, it's, it's tough. It's very fucking tough. But listen, I, I love the UFC, for example, all right? And I, I already know the gambling game. I look at the line. I look at what time of the year it is. I look at what the next fight is on the card. I look what else is coming up on Saturday, how they're going to bail out of this. 
It's, it's like shooting pool. You just don't shoot that ball. There's so many variables in the air. You know, what will they give you this week? They're going to get you next week on the boxing match, you know. Mm -hmm. You know all these little fucking things. So I went 0-2. I had uh, Overeem. Who the fuck did, thought Travis Brown was going to be Overeem? And who thought Lo Joe Lozon was going to lose in uh, Boston? What the if you would have called me and said Joe Lozon was going to lose in Boston, this guy's got the most fight of the night honors in the UFC. He's a skinny little white kid from Boston. <laughs> Every time he fights, it's on. You better fucking bring your helmet. It's fucking on, you know. And he fell apart. He went 0-2. You know, we don't really have the thing. When it comes to sports gambling, it's like stocks. You should talk in a circle. When, listen, when a good comic... You, you ever see those early Chris Rock specials? Mm -hmm. Remember uh, Black and Black and the one before that? How brilliant were they? <laughs> well, let me tell you why they were so brilliant. Because Chris Rock is a genius. Comics tend to be very egotistical. And they'll write their own material. Not Chris Rock. HBO would get Chris Rock 200000 as an advance. Chris Rock would take 50000 give one to Louis C.K., give one to Nick DiPaolo, and give 50000 to, uh... To who? Whatever his fucking name is. And they'd write... <laughs> <laughs> and, and they'd put... And they'd weave it all together. And Chris Rock would have an hour. So anybody knows that when you get together, like, if I was going to put a bet in for a million dollars, I'd have to call you and the Philly Godfather. Mm -hmm. I, think, well, I got a million dollars. I got a million dollars, and I got to make a million. What are we going to do here? And I know that the Philly Godfather is going to have his opinions, and you're going to have yours, and I'm going to have mine, but this is not what I do. This is what you guys do. So uh, if somebody doesn't trust you guys to do what you guys do, they fucking shoot themselves in the head because everybody loses. Mm -hmm. now, everybody loses. All you guys do is give you a little extra edge to win some fucking money. I'd rather win money and pay you guys than lose money and pay the book. <laughs> <True. laughs> you know what? That's well said because Godfather, I tell you, he's been doing this for years as I, and it ain't always peaches and cream, man. You got hills and valleys. It's about money, discipline, and, and sticking through a system. Godfather, elaborate on that, please. Yeah, I mean, the numbers are infinite, man. When you're talking about probability, you're just looking for an edge. And, like, all the preseason, I was kicking ass. Everyone was my best friend. I got the fucking senator call me up. Who do I like? I got some guys calling me up, some old friends. And then yesterday, I lose two games, and I can't even have a conversation with the cockroach. I mean, that's, it happens. You know, you go through streaks, and you got to be able to bet smart. You got to be able to manage your money, and you got to be able to do the right thing. And at the end, you're going to turn a profit. Yep, yep. Yeah, Minnesota went down yesterday. I, I took that on the chin too yesterday. You know what it is? But you did kick ass, and you're right. It seems like Coco. It's what they we can do for him today, and, and it, you can't win every day. Just like sometimes your show, one show might be better than the other, but you're always going to be there in the long run. Listen, the Yankees. The Yankees are the smartest organization out there. And this is 30 years ago, because Charlie Brenner had an idea. He goes, look, I, I, got, I, got eight, I got nine guys. One guy's a pitcher. <laughs> that means I got eight guys, okay? I need three guys batting at once for me to get to the playoffs. I need three. If five of them are batting, then it's cherry on the fucking Sunday. If six of them are batting, God forbid. But if I got A-Rod, the other guy, and the other guy hitting home runs, and five of them are fucking, you know, when the Reds won that championship that year against the whatever, Everybody was doing great. Tony Perez was 0 for 15. 0 for 15. One of their best fucking hitters was 0 for 15. They still won the World Series over the Boston Red Sox because they had two people, and that's the same thing with you guys. If it's you, Danny, and me, and we're three handicappers, one of us is going to be hot at one time. Out of the three of us. So if three of us have an office, it's like the Yankees. Somebody's going to be hot in October. We're all good at what we do. We're all home run hitters. The three of us are hot. That's the percentages the Yankees play. That's why they do what they do. Yeah, well, well. It's just knowing who's going to be fucking hot at one time. And then you get everybody swinging at the same time. Good things happen. But sometimes we all slump. And, and that's why I tell everybody because, you know, people want to ask me, is this guaranteed? Is that guaranteed? No, there ain't nothing fucking guaranteed. But I promise you this. If you follow a system with us and you don't deviate, you can make money. You know, you're not going to hit 80%. You can make money. Yeah, Godfather, let's talk unrealistic shit. Uh, 65%, 70% bullshit. You've made it clear. 58, 57% is as good as it gets, correct? That's a great season, man. I mean, you're going to have some better seasons than not. You know, you're going to have maybe one season every couple of years you get 60, 62%. And then you're going to have a bad one at 54, 55%. And maybe one year you break even. You can even lose money. But in the long run, as long as you're getting the best of the number, 
take for example Minnesota. We took four and a half. The game closed at two. Two and a half went back to three. Like you're getting the best of the number in the long run. You're going to make money, and that's all that matters. You can't worry about streaks or slumps. You got to worry about long term. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. And at the end of the year, you're going to make a profit. Well, that's well said as well. And again, football kicks off. Thursday night, South Carolina coming in number six. Coco, you have any favorites out there? Any teams that you like? Not saying to bet on. Any team that you root for to this day? You know, welcome me in college football. New Mexico State, because nobody bets. <laughs> okay. And, and in the NFL, no opinion there? Uh, I always like the late game on Sunday, because it's, an, it's a total game. They Okay. Hey, uh, um, Uncle Joey, I got a question for you. Um, as America's, far- game, America's game started when, uh, you know, it's amazing how when you when I first met you, Danny, football was Thursday, and football was Saturdays and Sundays and Mondays. Right. We were born on this country was built on Monday night football, and then something happened in the eighties. They started Thursday night football. Remember? Just to fucking fuck you in the ass with college. Then they started the NFL. So now you had a, an NFL game. And then they used to do the Sunday special edition on ESPN. I remember watching that Corky's one time when Atlanta was playing somebody and the running back from Atlanta. Everybody bet against them. All those games are designed to do one thing. And that's fuck you in the ass the same way. You know the 12 stations of the cross? You know the 12 stations of the cross? Well, that's Thursday night. It begins with Thursday. <laughs> then Friday you go to Gots. And then Saturday you've got three positions. By Saturday night you're on the fucking cross if you let them. And then Sunday they put a nail in your foot. And then Sunday night, they put the, dr- the thorn in your fucking head. And then Monday, all you wait for the thief to come and <laughs> stab you in the fucking neck, to slice your neck. I told- That's if you let them do that to you. If you let the fucking conscious pilot do that to you, the then he'll do it to you. Pilot- with well, this, this, is, this is how the bookmakers know what the average guy's thinking. So they adjust sure, lines sure. into what your, you know, what your perception is. And that's where they get you. And like you said, they put you up on that cross and then you're done. Yeah, you know, and then you're done. Yeah, now how many? You know, people, I love these people that go to Vegas and come back with eleven hundred dollars. I came back, yeah, sure you did. You know, Vegas is getting big and fucking big, and nobody even goes to Vegas and they're building shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Nobody's even in Vegas right now, and they got buildings that are empty, like that part of China that they built uh, ten years ago. And nobody lives there. That's Vegas. Yeah. That's, that's how much money they make, but nobody loses. You ever notice that? That's fucking crazy. Yeah. Well, there's a new sucker born every day. That's why you really got to do your homework. You come to our websites, you learn a little bit. And you have some fun and you make a little bit of money. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's what it's about. You were going to wind the show down. But I remember real quick, those Monday night. I'd start off a Friday night, sticking my chest out, pop a little bag. Next thing I know, I'm down Saturday, Sunday. And then Monday night, I'm calling in two or $3,000 parlays to Holloway. So, and yeah. Then, Go ahead. And then, and then Tuesday night, you're mugging a fag on Boulevard East. <laughs> <laughs> or taking down a truck road, uh, a truck on... Uh, <laughs> Down there on the tracks, down there, fucking Tunnelly <laughs> Avenue. We got a mother fan fucking or, or rob a jewelry store. <laughs> right, we we done it all. I mean, we ain't lying. I always found a way to pay, man. I don't know how I did it, but I bet with balls. I covered my bet. I met some good people along the way. And listen, <laughs> life hasn't always been perfect, but it's been fun, Coco. And I gotta thank you, buddy. I know your time is busy. You got a lot of shit going on, rather. And I'm going to see you up there in uh, New York City on the 13th. When do you get in, Thursday and Friday or just Friday? Thursday, Thursday. I'll call you before that. I want to be on the show again after football season. So give me a holler next week. Let's do this. All right. Thanks for your time. (laughs) JoeyDiaz.net. Thank you, you, pal. Thanks, Uncle Joey. Bye, Bye, Philly. Bye, buddy. Thanks, Cam. Thanks a lot. Much love. Godfather, you want to say anything before we close the show? We're looking at about 45 minutes or so, so leave off on He had me laughing the whole time. I kind of lost my train of thought. He just, the guy's oh. just the funniest oh, guy in the good, world, man. man. He makes good to talk to. The reason why he's so funny is because he connects with his audience. Between the storytelling and the comedy and the humor, it, it's just he's just the funniest guy in the world, man. He's real. He's I mean, hilarious, man. You got, if you're, anybody's in the area in New York City, well, excuse me. Look up at where he's at. He's all over the place. JoeyDiaz.net. Funniest motherfucker out there. He spends time with you between shows. You know, he and, he, just, and he brings out all the skeletons out of everyone's closet. Yeah. So everyone's like, oh, shit, I remember when I did that. Oh, no, I remember when I did that. Oh, my God. It's, you know what I mean? And you're laughing yourself. You're laughing with them. You're laughing at the, the whole thing's just on. Un- 
fucking believable. Yeah, I love my favorite about his comedy is it's so honest, you know. And a lot of people who would <clears throat> who would have similar stories to Joey would, would probably say nothing about it because they wouldn't want to bring that to light. But he just doesn't care. He brings he, it right out. He just brings it right out. He's like, I'm a disgusto. I don't give a shit. You know, this is my background, and fuck it, this is who I am. He talks about it's very cool. He talks about you know his skits of a great diverse, but he he has this one thing he talks about his cat getting high with his fucking cat yeah it's just the fucking funniest thing in the world you know and then he he, he gets you thinking and he brings you back in time but anyway speaking <laughs> of time it's that time we'll we'll be back at you again on friday it's a holiday weekend before you do anything stupid guys you can get in touch with the philly and you know how to get in touch touch with me and it's going to be an interesting football season so godfather thanks for joining us as always you got it, my man. Have a good one, guys. Awesome. Take care. Lights out. We'll All talk right. to you guys on Friday. And uh, again, thanks for tuning in.